If you follow my channel, you know I'm a huge fan of the Dell XPS 13. In fact, I've reviewed pretty much every model since its debut back in 2015, and for good reason. I love its gorgeous Infinity Edge display, the good performance, and probably most important, its thin and light, gorgeous design. But I got a chance to check out the new Dell XPS 13 back in January at CS 2019, and I couldn't wait to get it back into the studio to do a full review. I finally took delivery of it, and I've been putting it through its paces ever since. Hey everybody, it's Andrew, and this is my unboxing and review of the all-new Dell XPS 13. Coming up. Now, when it comes to pricing on the new Dell XPS 13, it depends on which configuration you go with. You can start with a Core i3 all the way up to a Core i7. Pricing starts at $899. You can go over $2,000 very easily, of course, depending on the SKU you choose. Now, I will put my affiliate link below to Amazon as well as Dell.com for more information so you can see for yourself. Now, in the interest of disclosure, I bought this with my own money. I'm not being paid by Dell. I'm not being sponsored by Dell. Dell did not provide a review unit for me, just so you know. So what we're looking at is a 13.3 inch 4K UHD display. Resolution is 3840 by 2160. And of course it has that infinity edge touch display. It's absolutely gorgeous. It's got the eighth generation Intel processor. It's the Core i5-8265U, AKA the Whiskey Lake processor. It's a quad core processor with some really nice performance. We'll go over that later on. It's got eight gigabytes of DDR3 RAM, 256 gigabytes of PCIe NVMe SSD, storage you're looking at killer wireless bluetooth 4.1 52 watt hour battery we will go over battery life and charging times later on in this video and i chose the platinum silver with the black carbon fiber palm rest this all comes in at a subtotal of 1399 dollars with tax here in nevada 1509 dollars and 81 cents yeah it's not cheap so let's find out if it's worth that price tag let's find out what's inside the box Now you have your three prong extension cord as well as your 45 watt power adapter. It's USB-C. We'll go over charging times later on in this video. You also get a USB-A to USB-C adapter. There is no USB-A port on this device. Keep that in mind. Now lifting the lid, you're greeted by the XPS 13 itself. We'll get to that in a moment. And finally, you get some documentation and warranty information as well. Now holding it for the first time, one thing that never gets old with the XPS 13 line is how thin and light this is and how premium feeling this is. This is a very high-end device. There's no doubt about it when you pick it up and lift it for the first time. Now when it comes to the ports, on the left side you get two Thunderbolt 3 ports. They support four lanes. That's great. So if you want to connect to multiple 4K monitors or to an external GPU, you can. Now you also have your battery indicator light, which I absolutely love on the XPS line. And moving over to the right side, you get a micro SD card slot for storage expansion, a USB-C port. It supports data, charge, and display out as well. And a 3.5 millimeter headset jack to round out the ports. Now the hinges are a shiny metal. They're strong, they're sturdy, and they work really well, and they look good as well too. The new Dell XPS 13 comes in three color options. Of course, you can get it with the platinum silver with the black carbon fiber palm rest. That's the one I went with. But of course, you can get it with rose gold with the alpine white woven glass fiber palm rest or the new frost white with alpine white woven glass fiber palm rest as well. That's the one I checked out at CES 2019 back in January. It's beautiful, but I'm a traditionalist. Give me that platinum silver with that carbon fiber. But without a doubt, the star of this show is its gorgeous 13.3 inch Infinity Edge display. Now I went with the 4K model, a resolution of 3840 by 2160. And you might be asking, well, is that overkill on a 13 inch laptop to go with a 4K option? Yeah, probably, but you know what? Call me a snob, I absolutely love it. It's sharp, it's crisp, it's absolutely gorgeous. Now it's that Dell Cinema display, so you're going to get that really nice dynamic range when it comes to watching movies. It's a pleasure to watch Netflix Netflix and YouTube on this machine. It's absolutely brilliant. And it's also a very bright display at 375 nits, and that's very good, especially considering you're getting that 4K display, and it does compare favorably against its competition. Now, the full HD model will get 358 nits, which is also good in its own right. 
You're looking at some very deep black, some very vibrant colors, and it covers the color gamut very well at 120% sRGB for the 4K model, and the Full HD model did even better at 126% sRGB. So if you're a creative professional, you can definitely take a look at this new Dell XPS 13. And I love the Infinity Edge display with those micro bezels. This thing is gorgeous. But they did make the top bezel a little bit bigger, but that's not a bad thing actually. It's a good thing because they were able to put in a proper camera in a proper placement this time around. Biggest shortcoming of the past iterations for sure. So this is the front facing camera on the new Dell XPS 13, the 9380. And as you can see, it is in a proper placement, finally, at the top of the display, where it should have been from day one. But unfortunately, in past iterations, it was that up-your-nose webcam. Uh, it's a 720p, 30 frames per second webcam. Not bad. Uh, as far as Skype and video conferencing, this certainly can get the job done. But I'm curious to know what you think. Let me know in the comments section below. Now, one thing this is not is a Windows Hello camera. You do get a fingerprint scanner, which worked well and registered my finger pretty much every time I used it. Setup was easy and it was a pleasure to use with Windows Hello. Now, one of the things that surprised me about performance on the new Dell XPS 13 in the Core i5 model is how well it did on the multi-core score of the Geekbench 4 test. In fact, it did a little bit better than the Core i7. I'm not sure that what was going on with that. Now, the Core i7 did better on the single core score, but when it came to the multi-core score, the i5 did really well, and that surprised me. To me, this is a great productivity machine, great for Microsoft Office, great for emails, great for web surfing. I also think it's an excellent multimedia machine especially if you go with that 4K multi-touch display, that Dell Cinema display, perfect for Netflix and YouTube, thanks to that high dynamic range that it can support. Now, we've started to see some of these 13-inch laptops starting to get these dedicated GPUs, like the MateBook 13, which has the MX150. This doesn't have that, and I kind of wish it did in a sense, because if you want to do some gaming, it certainly gives it a little boost. Not much, but a little bit better than what you get with the built-in graphics. Now, as you can see from these gaming results, you're not going to be playing the most modern titles on the highest settings. Let's get that out of the way, and I think we already know that. That's not what this device is geared towards. But you can play some older titles if you lower the settings, as you can see from these results. So just bear that in mind. This is definitely not a gaming laptop. You're going to have to look at other devices with dedicated GPUs if that's what you're really after. But of course, if you are interested in gaming, you can add the external GPU. That option is available due to the fact this does have Thunderbolt 3 ports that support four lanes. But of course, that adds to the overall price. And when it comes to the thermals, I was actually impressed. Good job on that front. That's thanks to those dual fans that they have inside this laptop. We'll take a look at that in just a moment. But as you can see, even under heavy load, it stays relatively cool. That's pretty good in terms of thermal management. Now getting inside this laptop is actually pretty easy. There are T5 Torx screws that you need to remove. Once you do that, remove the bottom plate and you're in. Now there are the two fans we talked about. It does help with the cooling as we just showed. And there's also an SSD on this that is user replaceable. So if you don't like it, you could always swap it out or if something goes wrong, you have that option. Of course, I don't know why you'd want to. As you can see from these crystal disk mark results, excellent reads and writes from it. Now, as far as the RAM, that's soldered on. You won't be able to upgrade that. So when you're checking out, make sure you get the most amount of RAM you can. 16 gigabytes of DDR3 RAM is the most you can configure this with. So just keep that in mind. And the Wi-Fi card is soldered on. You won't be able to upgrade that, although I had no issues with it. Very good speeds, uploads, and downloads alike. And the range was very good as well. The new XPS 13 has two one-watt speakers, one on each side, as you can see here. They get pretty loud. Let's give it a listen. Finally got my hands on it. 
The new Dell XPS 13 sports a 4-cell 52-watt-hour lithium-ion battery, and here's how it did on my continuous web surfing over Wi-Fi at 150 nits. My 4K model got 8 hours and 23 minutes for 4K display. That's actually pretty good. You're looking at all-day battery life. Now, the Full HD model did even better, 12 hours and 28 minutes, best in the class, best in this category, excellent run times on all fronts. But if you do need to plug in, the good news is that the supplied 45 watt compact power adapter will charge your laptop to 80% in one hour. Things slow down after that, 100% just under three hours, two hours and 52 minutes to be exact. Now, when it comes to the keyboard, it's actually pretty good. At only one millimeters of key travel, it's a bit on the shallow side, but I didn't feel like my fingers were going to bottom out at any point, and it had pretty good tactile feedback. Love the fact that it has a multi-stage backlight, which was really good, allowing me to get worked on in a dark room or a dimly lit environment. And I love the precision touchpad, worked really well. Two finger scrolling was buttery smooth. All the Windows 10 gestures worked as advertised. I think the keyboard and the touchpad do the job. Excellent on this thin and light convertible. So to wrap it all up, can I recommend the all new Dell XPS 13? And the answer is absolutely. This is a bright, stunning, sharp 4K display. Even the full HD is going to be nice. Premium sleek design, outstanding build and quality, good placement on the webcam, fast SSD, and excellent battery life on all fronts. But of course, the price can get expensive, that being the chief con. I really don't find any deal breakers though, in my opinion, you get what you pay for. That money to me is well spent. Dell has outdone itself producing a near perfect laptop. It's my editor's choice for the 13 inch ultra portable category. I'm gonna give it a score of 96%, making the new Dell XPS 13 worth your money. So what do you think about this bad boy, the new Dell XPS 13, my editor's choice for the 13 inch laptop category and for good reason, that gorgeous infinity edge display. I went with the 4K option and I'm glad I did. It also got some good battery life. Now that's eight and a half hours for the 4K model. You're gonna do 12 and a half hours on the full HD non-touch model and that's excellent in its own right. But me, I'm a snob, whatever you wanna say, yes, I love the 4K display. I love the performance out of that Whiskey Lake processor. I didn't feel the need to go with the Core i7 with this model. I went with the Core i5 and with that Whiskey Lake processor, you're getting that quad core processor. It's really good in terms of performance. Everything was really good, indicated by those bench marks I did show. Now, one of the biggest improvements is that webcam. It's in a proper placement. I thought it looked pretty good. And that was one of the biggest negatives I thought that the Dell XPS 13 had in previous iterations. It had that up your nose webcam. That's a thing of the past. And thank God for that. But I'm curious to know what you think. Let me know in that comment section below. This to me is my editor's choice for the 13 inch laptop category. It's a great ultra portable and to me is a nearly perfect laptop. Hence that really high score. So please hit the like button, please subscribe, please share this video. Don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if there's a device or something out there you think I should review. I'll do my best to try to make that happen. Don't forget to check me out on Facebook, on Twitter, Instagram, and of course my website, amdtechreviews.com. So until next time, this is Andrew from AMD Tech. See ya.